Hi there, folk, and welcome. So you're thinking of playing a bard at your next event. You know about the singing and the storytelling, but what else can you do to fill out your character? And how else can you entertain the people? In a while, we'll look at fire ladder duties for an eager new bard, and I'll also be revealing one of my favourite card tricks. And stick about to the end, and I'll have some sage advice on what not to do. First, though, as usual, I have two music recommendations for you. As I'm not singing today, I've chosen two groups that may not be the easiest to use as campfire songs, though hats off to you if you can. I use these both for inspiration and motivation, and I just really like listening to them. The first go by the name Two Steps From Hell. They formed originally to produce vibrant movie trailer scores, and I'd like to suggest their first album, Skyworld, for you. Secondly is a group called Ensemble Unicorn. Their music is early renaissance or medieval in style, and they can be found alongside other artists on albums such as Music of the Troubadours. Both groups will keep you inspired to write as well as keeping you motivated whilst you finish sewing your last bits of kit or waterproofing your tent. Now, if I don't have my guitar with me, or I've lost my voice, or someone much better than me has just performed and I'm embarrassed, I still like to have a little something to keep me occupied. This is a card trick or stunt I like to call Blind Return, and it could even earn you a drink or two around the bar. First, I'll perform the trick, and then I'll give you a tutorial. Let's get shuffling. Okay, so you found your audience member. Now, first thing to do is to ask them what their favorite card is, or just to pick a card from the pack. Show them all the cards. For ease of the trick, I'm gonna say that he has chosen kings, she has chosen kings, but they can literally choose any card they want as long as it's four of a kind. You sort them out, take them out of the deck, offer them to the audience member to have a look at. Look at both sides, make sure they're not ridged, they're not cut, there's no marks on them. And while they're doing that, just to take out a few cards from the deck, put the other cards to one side. As soon as the audience member is happy, found the cards and ask them to put cards in anywhere they like. And as long as they're happy. Now, give them a chance to move any if they want. They might want to move that one. As soon as they're happy, fold this back. You can fold this back up. Give them an opportunity if they want to cut, cut. If they want, you give them a little shuffle. I recommend just give a tiny little shuffle. Now you explain what you're going to do. You're going to be shuffling these cards up, turning some face up, some face down. And then you are going to make everything come back to normal with kings face up and every other card face down through the power of your own memory and your own feel and skill. So the first thing to do is to start randomizing the cards. So you place one card face down, one up, down, flip, down and 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 flip. Okay, so you think that is randomized. Cut the pack a couple of times maybe, if the audience wants to. So you think that's randomized, you think that's well shuffled? Well, I don't think it's shuffled enough. So we're gonna give you the opportunity to tell me whether to put cards down or to flip them. We'll put down two at a time. Would you like me to put them down or flip? Down, flip, down, down, flip, 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 down. Whatever the audience member says, you do. Would you like me to cut the cards? Yeah. Would you like me to cut them again? No, it's fine with that. Okay, so I'm sure you can appreciate that these are now well randomized and well shuffled, but I don't think they're shuffled enough, so we'll do it again. With four cards this time, would you like me to put them down or flip? Down. Down. Flip. Flip. Whatever they say you do. Would you like me to cut the cards? Yep. Yeah. Or would you like me to cut the cards again? Yep. Yeah. Okay, now I'm sure you can appreciate that those are well shuffled and well randomized, but I don't think they're shuffled enough. So we'll do it one more time. We will deal all cards out into four piles just to get these well shuffled. And then we'll take these piles and put these piles into two piles. And we'll get these two piles and it is up to you. Which pile would you like to go on top? This pile or this pile? This pile? Yep, yeah, that pile can go on top. Okay, so now I'm going to use the power of my memory and I'm going to replace everything so that the kings are up, face up, everything else is face down. But I'm going to do it behind my back. I'm going to put my put the cards behind my back and you will give me a certain amount of time to sort these cards out. And I will bet you one pint of beer that I can do it. Obviously, because I've done it before, 
I'm going to give you the opportunity to decide how many seconds I've got to do it. Is that a deal? Yeah? Okay, I've got how many seconds? One second, okay? Okay then, so let's get it behind my back and then we'll start the clock. Okay, and one. Well, I think I might have done it. That was tough, but let's have a look. There we go, four kings, everything else face down. And you can check to make sure that everything's okay. That, my friends, is the trick. Okay, here is a quick tutorial. Ask the mark what kind of card he wants. You can choose, they can choose any kind of card they like. You deal it out for them, and then while they're looking at this, you deal off 12 cards. I deal them out in packs of three, just to make it look like it's a little bit random, you don't actually know. Put the other cards away, give your mark the opportunity to put these wherever they want. They can put them absolutely anywhere. Give them the opportunity to change them when they're like that, so that they just know that they have got full control of this. Close them up. Give it a little shuffle, and the opportunity to cut if they want to. And then the self-working begins. So you put your first card down, you flip it over, you put one down, flip, down, flip, down, flip, down, flip, down, flip, down, flip, down, flip. And then you offer them the chance to cut, and maybe the chance to cut again. Make sure they're not cutting into three piles. If they cut into three piles, things will go wrong. Cut, complete the cut. So you say, okay, this isn't random enough. I need it round more random. And this is where you can choose. Would you like to put two cards down or flip them over? Flip them down, yeah, put them down, flip them, flip them, down, flip, down, flip. And again, you say, would you like to cut? You can cut as many times as they want. Just give them the opportunity to cut once, maybe twice. Tell them it's not quite shuffled again. So you're going to do it with four cards this time and offer them the chance to put them down or flip. So you go down, down, flip, flip. Whatever they want, they can do. Cut the cards again if they want us to. Now you say it's still not shuffled enough. So you are going to deal into four piles. You have to be a little bit careful here. Just remember what you're doing. You've got your four piles here. Now the outside piles go onto the inside piles. So flip them over from the outside onto the inside the outside onto the inside. Pick up both piles and you give them one last option. Would you like this pile to go on top? Would you like this pile to go on top? Doesn't really matter what they say because if they choose this pile, it goes on top this way. If they choose this pile, it goes on top this way. So they're going to choose this pile. That goes on top. Okay. So now you say to them, <coughs> what we've got here is a fully shuffled, randomized deck of cards. I am now going to put this behind my back and I am going to try and reset everything so the kings are face up and the, uh, every other card is face down. Now I'm going to bet them a pint that I can do this, but because uh, I've obviously done it before, I'll give you the opportunity to tell me how many seconds I can do it in. They will normally say one second. So you kind of gulp and go, oh, okay, yeah, I'll do it. Okay, so you put it behind your back, count one, one. Give the cards a little, just to make it look like you're doing something. You can tell already that this is going to be the bottom, so flip the cards over. You've got a king on top, okay? You've got two kings on top, you've got three kings on top. And there's your fourth king. It's absolutely self-working, provided you do everything that we've just been through, nothing can go wrong. Okay, take your pint. Wander off into the distance. Happy days. So now you know. I actually learned that some time ago from a YouTube channel called A Million Card Tricks. And, and I'll leave a link in the description. Before we move on, if you'd like to show your support, then please click the subscribe button and give us a like as well. It helps the channel grow and Napoleon and I would be eternally grateful. Yeah? Yeah. Now you're probably aware that a bard can usually be played in conjunction with any other class, although do check your system's rules. A bard could be a warrior or a shaman, a ranger, whatever. But if you want your character's main focus to be barding, what else can you do? Well, here's a few suggestions. Firstly, offer your services as a messenger. 
Running from camp to camp can get you some decent roleplay, keep you up to speed on plot, and get you noticed by the higher echelons. Get your pen and paper together and go deliver those promises of allegiance or threats of war. Secondly, you could be a herald, announcing when anyone new comes into your camp, as well as travelling with your superiors and announcing their arrival to other factions. This can get you very close to the faction leaders, which has its pros and cons in itself. Thirdly, try your hand at newskeeping, taking note of everything that's going on, documenting political strife and royal shenanigans. You could even sell your stories to in-game newspapers. Sometimes called witnesses, these kind of roles are always appreciated. And next, following on from newskeeping, you can generate tales to order. Offer yourself to write heroic songs for the mighty warriors in your ranks. For a couple of coins, you could turn even the most cowardly fighter into a legend by the end of the weekend. And lastly, if you can get in with the top bods, you could even become a jester or court advisor, reminding the king where his loyalties should lie or keeping the queen from making rash, vengeful decisions. A quick mind, a quick wit, and possibly a quick pace are all useful attributes for this line of work. So there you go. A few suggestions on how to flesh out your character and fill your time during a game. Now, my last piece of advice for new bards, or indeed new players generally, is to play a character who is open and accessible, friendly and approachable. Sure, it's tempting to play the character who lurks in the corners, the shadows wrapped about them like a cloak. Trust me, no one will care. You'll end up as the weirdo sitting in the dark. People have their own game to play and they won't come to a character who is surly and offensive no matter how enigmatic and mysterious you think you look. The NPCs, yes, go for it. For a paying player character, you will regret it. I know because I've done it. Make your character jaded and belligerent as they progress, sure, if situations dictate. But be open and accessible for game to come to you and as such spread from you with ease and grace. Until the next time, Lightbards. Goodbye.